Okay, yeah, we are recording right now. Okay, so how's it going? Um, today is sort of my last workshop, yeah? Meaning that we have a lot to cover today because I'm trying to finalize two different workshops today. Yeah, so we can make it happen. Wait, let me share my screen. Okay, little adjust my fingers a little bit. Give me a sec. Here, chatting here. Okay. <coughs> Great. Um, today we have two materials, as I said. One is the pipeline for data and geometry for visualization. And that the last material that we want to visit is the distance mapping using ArcGIS JS API things. Correct. So, um, first of all, um, as we did, you know, we have a research overview and then some uh, like a lecture things for the MVP pattern and some programming pattern for the CAD system and in action for the visualization. And then we have a set of the tutorials, um, some exercises, and there's some additional materials in there. Okay. Great. So let me jump in a little bit. So <clears throat> this is one of my work um, to create a sort of you know um, environment which is mimicking our complex system. So in this uh, project, what I want to do is um, I mean there's a multiple like environment. So in that environment, they have there are some like a chain relationship between objects in that world. So for example, um, we have a tree here, right? So basically cloud produce the water as a lane, yeah? And then the individual tree can consume the lane and then it meet a certain amount of level of uh, water and then it, it create its own family around there. And then we can extract the tree from the ground, it become timber and then we can move to timber to factory to create the money. And at the same time, they produce, you know, the carbon dioxide, and then it basically trigger, you know, some natural disaster. It's like a chain effects. So, I mean, what I'm trying to say is, yesterday we made several class and object, and then we know how to decompose, um, like uh, the level of the execution, like a visualization level for the render, or some algorithm part for the, you know, the processing, uh, let's say the, the update um, or like um, analyze their geom geometric information during the loop, yeah, things like that. So, so in this level, actually the most important thing is that you need to basically orchestra all uh, different types of geometry at once. So it's really hard to, um, yeah, sometimes it looks really hard, but as I said, we can decompose the complexity in the, uh, the small level that we can manage, yeah. So today we're gonna learn how to do this, anyhow. Um, you know, basically computer, uh, okay. Compu computer aided design CAD is a very well defined area. It has been a long time, right? And particularly, I wanna, um, look, I wanna looking at the CAD, you know, with the perspective of the inaction things. So this is the uh, sort of, um, very old CAD system developed by Lincoln Lab. So they talks about like a, you know, it's very old, right? They talks about like sort of an interaction with the uh, sketch pad here. So these are all sort of mathematic, you know, the geometric computation behind the scene. And then it has uh, some, you know, um, <coughs> sorry, pipeline for the visualization and interaction based on your move with the sketch pad, it keep, you know, interact and then visualize the data on the real time. So I think uh, from that time, this day, 2020, yeah, this is 3ds Max, uh, which is one of the, you know, let's say very complicated CAD software for visualization and modeling for, not only for architectural design, but also game industry or some, you know, film and so on and so forth. As you can see, there's a crazy, you know, button and, you know, UI. Um, it, 
I mean, UI and layers tool, selection tool, and rendering, and also you can pop up some menu by clicking some you know a mouse button with some shortcuts, so which is very crazy. So I think what I'm trying to say is we're gonna build this kind of interface to tweak our ecosystem. So um, yeah, I mean, Suggest Max is a very well defined um, uh, CAD software and Maya, things like that, because it has been developed for a long time. It receives a lot of feedback about you know, the user's um, um, use cases, I guess. So it has a very, you know, um, its own strategy to spread out and then categorize the individual menus. Um, you know, Ashley, Ashley has its own like uh, city engine, which is located in the Europe. I, I couldn't remember the city, but uh, the Ashley has uh, some you know, VR um, sort of interface. Yeah, we can not only visualizing the you know, urban data, but also you can interact, you can zoom in and out, you can inspect some data. I mean, it looks very straightforward, right? But however, as I said, there's a lot of complicated things happening behind the scene. So we, we're gonna talk about multiple types of layer to control the complexity, yeah? So we can move to here. So we reach one slide here, right? So we have been seeing you know, multiple types of CAD system. The CAD system, all CAD systems actually support you know, interaction because without interaction, so it's the CAD is become useless, right? So we wanna interact, we wanna uh, uh, apply some action to that environment, like click or move or draw, you know what I mean, right? So this is all about the interaction. So once you give some interaction, uh, um, like uh, some command to the CAD system, and then we expect some feedback as a visual language, yeah? But inside of the, the, the program, there's a very, uh, very clear, uh, I mean, straightforward way. For the first one is the input, you know, received from the interaction, and then you need to compute, correct? And then at the end of the computation, you wanna visualize on the screen so that the user can uh, receive the feedback from their, their interactions, okay? Uh, let me decompose a little more different. So here, um, application, yeah, the level of knowledge required. What I'm trying to say is that the, on the surface level, yeah, we have some, you know, I mean, human computer uh, interactions, which, which is also uh, one of the domain to dealing with the interface and some you know, user experience things. So on the first level, we have a command or UI controller or action sequences. Right. This is all about like sort of a circuit, like a process, right? User can see, yeah. And then we receive these action sequences, and then it basically trigger some particular algorithm, right? So, for example, um, the algorithm is a sort of higher, little higher level algorithm, particularly for parametric, parametric design pro process or agent basis. So basically, we have a set of cooking uh, recipes there, and then the UI is trigger uh, the some you know, action sequences based on their recipe, yeah? So in that, in that area, in that zone, I feel like the most important thing is then uh, the, 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 let's say, um, design experience. The domain knowledge is really important. So what I'm saying is, is a, this is the place where you can you know, uh, bring your uh, um, experience in design practice. It's, it has nothing to do with the computation, I think. And then, Little go down one, uh, <clears throat> one more level deeper. So we are in count like an analytical geometry. We sometimes we call it computational geometry because we wanted to tweak the geometry by the number or some like computation, right? So in this case, the knowledge required is that like you need to understand the coordinate system, like a real one, two, three space, where, which is Cartesian coordinate or we need to strong understanding about the vector and geometry and mesh, what is co connectivity, how we compose or decompose mesh as a point or edge or polygon, things like that. So this is the more about like, um, you know, computational geometry things. And then we can go down one more level right here. So now we are reached sort of a bottom level of the application. All the way down, there's a, you know, some graphics library that hardcore engineer people have been developed 
you know, so such as OpenGL, WebGL, DirectX, HTML, Canvas, these are like, so, uh, provided us with very low level API, which directly talk uh, GPU, okay? So in that area, so computer science knowledge is required. So for example, like how to, you know, create a class, yeah? How we, you know, designate the, the memory allocation, right? Also how we create the, like thousands of thousands of the vertices on the fly, yeah? I mean, it has nothing to do with the design practice. It has nothing to do with the, you know, computation geometry. It's more about like understanding the computer system to maximize the performance. So this is sort of my understanding of the developing some of like a software, which I, which I said, which software is not just software. Software is basically packaging our knowledge and technology in a, in a, in a way, as a, like a mobile phone, you know? So here, um, the developer for graphics, sort of for, for example, like there's some computer science people specializing in graphics program. They're usually focusing on that area. Actually, you know what the interesting point I found is that they have no idea about design experience and algorithm part. Basically, they are not interested in, they're really focusing on that kind of area, like a, let's say backend of the study software, okay? At the same time, I also found one interesting aspect as opposed to, you know, the other, uh, something as I said, the designer has no idea about the backend. So there's some, you know, um, so it's a really, little bit hard to, you know, accord, you can make them together. So actually, yeah, anyhow, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to make a two different, um, I'm trying to make a, a bridge between two areas. So this is my sort of uniqueness I'm, I'm, I'm trying to develop right now. So here, uh, the other way around is like, it, it, it talks about like technology. Previously, we talked about the knowledge, the depth of knowledge. But here we talk about like a sort of a technology things. So all the way down, as I said, we have some of the lower level for library, and then the graphics, the, the computer science people, they basically develop some very basic classes, just we did yesterday. And then they create the API that user can access, yeah, such as like a C sharp, Rhino Python, or Rhino C sharp, or processing let's say uh, Maya Python or Maya Math script or Max script. So this is, it basically has set up the, the, the wrapper to talk directly to core library, which is built, I don't know, C++, 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 C++ or something. And then, and then they package the API as a sum of the UI things, like a undo, redo, offset, which is like a very, you know, uh, let's say one-on-one -on -one or required um, modification for geometry, I guess. And then on, on the, the UI level, we can basically bind menu, you can see here, right? Bind the uh, menu with the APIs. So these are different, different point, a uh, different aspect of the bringing the applications uh, pipeline. Okay. Um, so actually, you know what? While you're developing your product, um, there's a lot of people asking like, we, we need to implement this one. We have a problem for this one. We want to update this one. So it's really, really easy to become sort of um, spaghetti code like this. Yeah. It's a, I mean, what I'm saying is uh, we basically dealing with the complex system. So in order to deal with complex system, we need to set up very simple rule, just like graph. Yeah. So actually all the software has their own sort of, uh, let's say graph is like, not like graph like this. It's more about like a mental structure of the application. So how they talk, you know, what is the sort of terminal? All the command is goes to that terminal and then that terminal is to sort of disseminate this information to designate function to execute and then wait the feedback from the execution and then bounce back to the UI. I mean, this is all about like a, let's say system, yeah. So here, this is a little more uh, clear diagram that I wanted to discuss with you guys. So there's a, a lot of design pattern for the uh, for software in industry. So this is sort of a very um, generic, let's say, uh, pattern called the MVC pattern, model view controller. I mean, obviously, this is sort of a holistic like a um, concept of the how we you know, struct. 
the application. Yeah. So the interpretation or the, the detailed um, information could be a little bit different based on what you want, basically. So here the, in the view, we can call this is sort of uh, the UI la layer that you can append some UI or some button or I don't know, some mouse in action. So using the uh, Win, Win 3.2 or WPF for Windows and then DIV for the HTML, uh, what else we have? Uh, maybe Swift, you know, for the iOS. This kind of UI, the, the API has a lot of uh, sort of uh, their own sort of UI and the API for controlling um, the UI, let's say view, okay? I think uh, what, it, what, it, what it does is basically find like a received command from the service level and then inject this um, the, uh, command to the model to, to compute, okay? This is just like a bridge uh, between system and human. And then we have a controller. The reason we have a controller is because uh, this is sort of, a, as I said, this bridge because we have a lot of, lot of command, yeah? A lot of like a, let's say just like game, yeah? So actually, let me share my experience. Um, I work with other web developers. They are really straightforward because either append their menu or not, it's very clear, right? So it's really hard to make them break. But CAD system, there's a lot of edge cases, corner cases happen easily. So what if you click with the short, some several shortcut? What if you drag from this point into that point? What if we have the, some geometry inside of this rectangle? I mean, there's a lot of corner cases. So in the first place, as I, as I joined the, uh, the, the, my company, I'm a little bit harder to communicate because they try to understand CAD system as a like, web environment, which is almost impossible. So what I'm saying is that there's a lot of combination that you need to control, yeah? So in the controller level, we have a, a IO, let's say you can import JSON, CSV, or PNG, which is image or some 3D geometry, like um, uh, OBJ or 3DS, this is binary format. And also we have an asset, like some image, or you know, some color or thing to define the entire loop you know, of your applications. And also we have a command, like let's say point, or so for example, we visualizing some point here and then we can click, there, there should be some menu, for example, and then you can click and then drag with the, um, the point that you visualize on the map. And then based on the command, you can filter out the data and then show the different result. What if we wanted to catch a different visual and want to compare at the same time? I mean, this is all about like active command things. We, we have a set of, a set of command, if you click, or whenever icon, we basically switch the active command and, and then the mouse, mouse in action or keyboard in action, all other interactions just goes to that, uh, that the active command. And then the active command, we basically ask the active command, what's your command right now? If it's a selection command or if you draw command, it behave a little bit differently based on their own sort of um, um, selective command, let's say. And then for the implementation side, uh, what I'm trying to say is basically I'm decomposing the concern, right? So, uh, I mean, for example, if we found some bugs, and then we can predict what kind of a pipeline, which area is become break, yeah, which is really good, um, um, important things for the developing your, I mean, it's, it has nothing to do with the developing very simple application, but this kind of mentality is really important to make a little complicated or a little smart uh, CAD system, I guess. And also the mo in the model, we have, um, now we actually have like a render here and geometry. Uh, in the implementation part, it has uh, a lot of like um, some interesting, you know, a job uh, that we, can, we are interested in right now, like a developing point or line or visualizing and style, yeah? And then revealing some insight by building with some point cloud or line intersection or whatever things happening. So even here, so the ge geometric object is a basically could have possibly, as we did, it's like mathematical object. And then based on the different renderer, it smartly switched the looks or the, how they you know, render on the screen. And then uh, it's like a snapping, sorting, or picking, or whatever geometric computation uh, command is goes that this, I'm sorry, goes that uh, command the process or helper area and then this helper area is directly tweak the geometry data. So what I'm saying is uh, I'm 
trying to make some of, let's say, this kind of diagram here. <clears throat> so um, this is the other um, different perspective of the same structure. So basically, we have the, the uh, external library, let's say, vector or color or mass. I mean, the open gel or web gel, or in case that you use the some of a little high level wrapper of the graphics tool, and then they basically provide some like a boilerplate code. Yeah. So for example, Unity. Unity has a vector, right? Unity has a mass, right? Even the Rhino, they have their own sort of the, the library. We can consider them as a external libraries here. Okay. So it has no dependency. So we basically create the basic class using, let's say, like an inherence, which is um, the jargon in the object-oriented programming right, things. So we, in the base mode level, we basically declare like a very high level um, um, concept. Yeah. So for example, for the let's say um, human, we have one head and two legs and two hands, right? Just like that. It's like a, give us like very boilerplate as a high level. And then individual, the, let's say concrete class, point, line, area, they receive, uh, they inherit from their parent class. So we need to implement, which is sort of a rule or a guideline. So individual, um, um, okay. Individual uh, geometry has, uh, they are, uh, uh, yeah, they has uh, same sort of a structure guided by the base geometry, correct? And then um, there should be some particular function that only belongs to that individual uh, unique shapes, such as that length. There's, there's no, 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 no length for the point, for example, right? So for the area, we can apply like get area function, for example. We can basically obtain the function as, as you need, okay? So this is just talks about like a hierarchy and then the data flow, how we get like a mental structure. Just I'm trying to make some X-ray of this CAD software in general. Okay. And then, and then we have a renderer here. The renderer is just, as I said, there's two, two more, maybe three different types of renderer. One is the, let's say, static, just one time render, that's it. And then real time looping rendering. And then the last one is like sort of hybrid things. We can just keep render if necessary. Otherwise, we can just make it make it static because we don't want you know use the computation expense, right? So anyhow, uh, whenever you create the geometry, the geometry is basic uh, um, automatically append to the scene. Yeah. So scene is like let's say one like sort of a bucket. Yeah. We can we can consider it as a list or array. So whenever you create it, automatically goes to your scene. And then every render loop, the renderer visit the scene and then ask, do you have any shape or geometry that I need to render right now? And then the scene give, a, give, give the, uh, some geometry to the renderer. And then the renderer, um, based on, because we consider these geometries as a mathematical object. So based on their, I don't know, maybe we have some rule, maybe they have their own unique ID. And based on the ID, the renderer take care of their, how they, uh, looks on the screen. Yeah, it's like a high level uh, understanding. So, um, and then again, inaction is important, right? The user can click or dragging or click some menu, right? In order to inspect geometry or inspect the data visualization on the screen. Yeah. So, as I said, we receive the command and then don't tweak something directly, which is a really, really dangerous way. The command always need to go to active command to be processed because we have a pipeline. We need to, uh, even if you detour a little bit, we must follow the pipeline. Otherwise the pipeline become break and then you couldn't find where is the break. Yeah, it's really, really dangerous. So most important thing for the software architecture, for the, uh, not architecture architecture, software architecture, so more about like a pipeline and then switch and then um, switch the flow of data, flow of data or let's say um, isolate the problem and then, um, um, you know, yeah, something like that, yeah. Um, yeah, so inaction actually goes to the active command, right? So active command is process 
uh, fly you basically. Oh, I'm clicking event. Okay. So since you use a press shift button, I think you need to go to co uh, uh, command the process and then the common, uh, sorry, common process and common process will a lot of geometry centric like computation functions are there. So we smartly switch the function and then uh, internally they directly talk or modify the geometry. Yeah. And then, as I said, the renderer is independently loop. And whenever they change, they pick up the change. And then they uh, reflect the change for the screen as landed. So um, these are sort of a very high level, like a mental skeleton of the architecture for the CAD, CAD softwares. Do you guys have any question about it? Great. So um, class, again, we saw, saw this page. Actually, we visited this page yesterday. But today, the reason I visit this um, page again is to you know, emphasize the importance of the class. Yeah? So I'm not going to uh, make some demo yeah, or like some exercise here. But I'm briefly uh, mentioned the important thing that you need to remember to create this kind of the architectural pipeline using OP paradigms, OK? So um, here, basically, we have animal class. It's like a sort of a parent class, yeah? And then, this, again, this is the TypeScript syntax, right? So the concept is going to be the same in different language, Python or Java or C Sharp or C++. They have a similar concept, basically the same concept, but a little bit different implementation and different exceptions happening. So I mean, again, we are trying to understand the you know, big umbrella rather than something in detail. So um, this is my, like, let's say, point, or because you know, it's impossible to understand everything for six days. Anyhow, um, we have an animal class here, so which is parent, and then it has a move function, right? So the dog is extended from animal, right? Meaning that the function is inherent to that um, the class, which is like a, let's say, concrete class, which is abstract class, which is, let's say, concrete class. So now I, I create the, some of a, uh, uh, I mean, let's say you can see the new keyword, right? So meaning that we're going to create the instance from the class. Let's say make some object from the template. Yeah. So we have a uh, bark, move, bark. So it, we implemented the bug in the scope of the dog class. However, we also have the move class because the parent class has, right? It's nothing special. So um, also, we, you need to um, make sure for the super. Super means we need, in case that you inherit some class from parent class, we need to execute first for the super. This is sort of a syntax. So this example talks about that one. And also, we can define not only in you know, a function, but also define some name. And then uh, we have an animal and cat, rhino, employee. They inherit from the uh, animal, so meaning that they occupy all the same properties. And then for the implementation side, you can override. Otherwise, you can make your append some particular function that gonna follow particular classes. Yeah. So this is all about like inheritance. Um, and also, we have a protect, uh, protected uh, value. So as I said, uh, the class has a variable. Previously, we never typing anything uh, um, uh, in front of the, the variable. But in the class, there's three, let's say, types of um, level of the access. One is the public, meaning that you can access whatever, uh, I mean, in this, uh, you can access um, out of this class from the out of this class and um, also protect, we have a protected protected uh, in this case parent class can access but the private private as an instance for is only private so so parent class or children class cannot access the parent, uh, the private things I mean I'm not expecting you guys to understand but just um, just you know oh there is something yeah so as uh, you guys study and then this kind of concept become an uh, important safeguard for creating the pipeline and architecture things. 
So I highly recommend you to go to class page here and then just type in. Yeah, and also there's a lot of good material to describe the OOP paradigm or MVS pattern um, in here on things. Um, also there's a very famous book like Golf Design Pattern. So there's a link. The book talks about different types of a pattern, let's say creation pattern, a structured design pattern, behavioral design pattern. I mean, I mean this is a little bit, you know, let's say open topic maybe, uh, because the com even the computer science people, um, all the computer science people uh, couldn't, I mean, understand. I mean, that one's a little bit like com complicated thing. So, I mean, but that concept, you don't need to follow exactly, but the concept is give us some guideline to create the, your structure of the pipeline. So anyhow, when, when it comes to talk about, um, talking about uh, the design pattern, golf design pattern is one of the one-on-one -on -one books here. So we saw the MVC pattern. If you're interested in it, please click, and then there's a lot of things. And OP, Object Oriented Programming, link is there. Any question? Yeah, I mean, this is a little bit advanced uh, things, but uh, good to know, actually, because um, I don't know if you just use the, some, like a functional, uh, let's say, programming, just like Grasshopper, like the input, the output, input, output, you don't need to understand. But in case that you need to make some sort of um, design, let's say, system or some iterative optimization things or some more smart, the complicated designing um, ecosystem. I think they're using the, uh, without the class or OP, let's say pattern. Um, so I think it's, it's almost impossible because it's too complicated. It's really hard. It's really hard to even the implementation. Also, it's really hard to maintain in terms of the debugging purpose. So um, here is uh, some other example here. So I just copy paste the animal, snake, and horse things from the website as I uh, saw so you here, the class um, TypeScript. So just take a look at it and then tweak a little bit as you need and then just make them break and then try to fix it, okay? This is a really good hobby to, to, to learn programming, sorry. <clears throat> um, and also while I'm, you know, preparing for this material and then I just realized I have uh, some other um, Python material that I already, uh, that I made, I don't know, uh, last year, I guess. So this is the, just a make, uh, this is just a, as an example, the Python class. So I'm briefly talk about this um, sort of implementation, very high level. So, um, Let's say I have a person class here, right? And person has a constructor, and then they have a name, age, energy, and number of killing people, uh, or is it alive? Because I'm trying to make some tournament to fight each other, and then who is the, the last guy you know, standing, yeah? And then also we have um, some um, like a variable to track the history of the fight. And then this is the function the based on the, the needs and print. So I create the NJ, HJ, yeah. So, I'm, so it has an energy and age, right? And then uh, HJ kill NJ, right? And the NJ is born by HJ. Yeah, so we, I'm, I'm just trying to make a small system, yeah. And then uh, there's a, I'm testing whether they're hit from the, uh, I mean, HJ hit by um, WW person here. At the, at the end of the, uh, the script here, so I create the multiple people like NJ, MJ, DJ, AJ, KJ, yeah. And then I create the one game object here. And then I play the game, yeah. And then each, person in the array, they fight each other. And then as you can see, the engine has a 100 energy and then it goes down, yeah? This is a loser, I guess. And then AJ is winner. I'm keep fighting 
because uh, it's probability like uh, if each, ha each people has their own way to to decrease the energy against their enemy yeah so um all the way down i think of with you know uh, mj is a winner i guess so these are examples of the how we you know use the class as an, an example so i just leave here so you guys can download the um jupyter notebook so for those who have no idea about jupyter notebook and then just go to google Colab and then import jupyter notebook yeah in case that you don't have any environment like anaconda environment or python environment and then also there's other materials for the python um yeah so we have the class and then some graph you know and some graph or visualization also we can trigger the, the uh, html canvas that we learned on the python environment this is some example i think i did yeah so i just share possible study material for you guys and since we are dealing with the interaction things i implement uh, some you know um common in action things using CAD system so nothing special i just create one one um canvas and then append it to div right and then um this is actually the different way of defining the const value but it has a multiple const yeah so we call it enumerator so or enumeration on enumerator i don't like don't remember but this is a syntax so we can define like this and also um, as i said the class itself can represent as a data structure so sometimes we can call a dictionary become class also class become sort of a dictionary or json file yeah you can string file actually so i just create a sort of um, class which represents data set or data structure for mouse event data yeah and then this is the there are multiple way but i just directly overwrite you can actually append additional um event on designate like a uh, like let's say dom the canvas is dom actually so dom is the uh, html elements by the way button or div or UI. so this is the uh, um api yeah the default data type so what i mean by that is okay let me let me actually i'm i'm, I'm keep moving while i'm moving this event is triggered yeah so it, because i never click it so this one is act, uh, uh, fired from my mouse event so i'm keep updating my uh, x and y based on my movement so um, let's say we can do here like uh, x for example yeah so i'm just printing only x value here because you know let me decompose a little bit okay so there's a mouse down event mouse up event and mouse movement event whenever you click and move or press or up this event could be fired from the inbuilt function on the web browser and then we receive this mouse event data e yeah this e data it, 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 it has rich data let's say this data so these are all parameters that then you can access from from the, the mouse event data so sometimes you can use this data directly but i prefer creating creating our own sort of data structure that's why i create this mouse class here so whenever you, uh, basically i create a, a variable here and then whenever uh, we fire mouse event this mouse event is going to be updated automatically yeah and then at the end of the process we're going to push this data to the active command and the active command is going to cook this data and then do their own job yeah and then the, and then the other uh, concept i wanted to ask uh, talk to you is that actually mouse interaction is a little bit complicated a way complicated than this one actually so but you know we have um 
like a mouth, but there's no dragging event, right? Yeah. But we can mimic the dragging event by doing this. Because if I press, I'm, I'm actually, I'm, 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 I'm press my mouse like this, and I'm trying to move, yeah? Move, can you see that this drag? This is because when you press at the moment, we fire this event, and then the uh, easy press to become true, and then you move your mouse in a millisecond, and then this, act, uh, this function gonna execute. However, we already switch this value for the true, right? So this line of uh, code gonna be executed, yeah? So for example, I can do like this drag and just move, yeah? Think about, this is just a pipeline. The, the water is keep flow the pipeline. You can switch the pipeline as you, as you need. Right? Because the water is keep coming. So I'm just moving, I'm just moving my mouse here, and then I'm gonna click and drag in, and then the drag is happening. It's a older event, it's like a um, switch on the real time. Yeah. So this is about the mouse in action. Yeah, I mean it's a bit complicated or it's a little bit unfamiliar with because um, um, computational designer never dealing with this kind of weird things, I think, because it's not about like, creating application, more about like, designing some algorithm or some shapes. But I think this is a good time you know, to expand, push our boundary to expand our you know, ability, not just creating design algorithms, but more about like a software which package more you know, um, knowledge and technology in a logical way. Yeah. So the second example is keyboard in action here. Keyboard in action is the same as mouse in action, but it's a little bit simpler because it has um, pretty straightforward, like key press, yeah? I'm going to press like H here, okay, H. Yeah, okay. So the console is it's no good in this case. So we can open the developer channel here. Yeah, so um, again, we gonna see whenever you type something, we expect this data fired. So if you want to see what is this, then we have nice API here, right? So these are all the data that we can expect, like a alt, alt key or shift key, control key. If you press the control key, it becomes true, otherwise it's false. So then you can, so for example, in order to make a function to select multiple data on the visualization, we can use the shift uh, shortcut, for example, right? We can, we can, we can check it. Um, <clears throat> so the, the API is here. So again, you can you know, use the API. And then I'm going to press K, yeah? So I press the K, uh, fired by the, uh, not mouse, yeah. this is my bad. <laughs> he press, he up, save, yeah. Because whenever you press, two events fired in order, the press event first and the up event first, yeah. So we can basically decompose like a uh, the, the one action in different steps. This is all about the computation design. My understanding is, as I said, we need to make a more explicit con instruction that computer follow, yeah. So, I mean, the coding is very explicit, um, um, you know, the design steps. So anyhow, uh, the most important thing is that uh, for the designers, I'm not sorry, the, the developer, yeah. So I'm pressing L and then the key code is 76. So um, for me, in terms of the keyboard in action, rather than the compare the string, so we use the key code, yeah this, this uh, integer number, just for your information. Yeah. So we can compare this, uh, this information in that scope, and then you can pass this information to comment or execute your own particular algorithm. Let's say we have a multiple layer of the visualization on the map, and then you can switch one of the layer by press 
number one, two, three, for example. Yeah, you got my point, right? And touch in action. So recently, you know, touch devices become um, um, uh, common, yeah. And also, um, if you, I mean, we developing some like web environment, right? So as long as um, it executes on the browser, you can actually use your the application your your phone, right? So my computer support touch event. This is my finger. I'm gonna draw like this. Yeah. So okay, here's something. I'm gonna do this. Save. I'm trying to make inaction like a and. J, yeah. So here, uh, same as mouse in action, yeah. So we have different types of events like a, a handle start, hand, handle end, handle cancel, handle move. So I basically, uh, whenever you move, I push this position data to that, um, that, um, let's say data variable, which is sort of a global variable in this scope because each scope can access this data, right? So, uh, yeah, so that's why we are keep able to draw some point by my mouse finger, yeah? However, what if we append this event here? When, whenever I start touch here, I release my uh, finger from the screen. So we draw these points, right? And then I'm trying to touch the screen. The what happened is we gonna reset the data set. We make empty um, the, the array, right? And then we gonna clear the screen meaning that we remove all the previous rendering things, yeah? So that we couldn't see the previous drawing that I did, and then we're gonna, we're gonna see my new drawing, yeah? Here's my finger, I'm going, yeah, like this. So as I said, we decompose the action in a, uh, let's say, it's not like the same, but little lower level, we can decompose. We have more opportunity to control the events, yeah? from mouse event or keyboard in, uh, event or touch event. Or you can make a more complex like combination. Even though, you know, VR, right? It has like three dimensional, like uh, it give us three dimensional co coordinate system rather than give us like a screen coordinate system, anyhow. So opportunity will be there. So these are sort of like um, the mouse in action. Is there any question? Great, you can keep going. We have a limited time. Here, I'm going to introduce uh, 3JS. 3J is one of the light and popular 3D um, graphics, let's say, library, or uh, a library. I think it's not a sort of framework, but it's a library for the web browser. Yeah, it's really popular. And even, um, I mean, the potential of 3J is to become bigger and bigger, you know, because web is to become, you know, much more bigger, because 3 js it's really you know, light and fast and red gel uh, wrapper for the, um, the web graphics, let's say. There's a lot of examples. I encourage you guys to uh, tour the site. And here's the, um, let's say, uh, boilerplate code. Yeah. Same as uh, the canvas, I create the, I, I, I select the div that we create here, right? And then, there's a syntax we need to follow, yeah. Otherwise, you can directly ask the developer. Yeah, I have no idea. I'm just implementing according to their uh, API. Basically, we create a scene, right? And then render it here, right? Correct. And then the, we append this renderer to this div, yeah? Just think about like the step, like explicit steps, okay? And then we create a camera, and controller, so we can control like this, yeah? And then, um, this is, let's say, minimum um, 
code, I think. We need a camera, we need a shim and a render. It makes sense, right? It makes a lot of sense, yeah? Uh, and then, this is the actual um, the geometric construction that you need to understand because this is nothing special. It's gonna be just very similar to each other. It, it, it is not going to change a lot, I guess, because this is sort of a, uh, the, you know, the convention of the using the using this library anyhow. So basically, in 3JS, everything's mesh. There's no concept like knobs or whatever, just mesh. Yeah. To be honest, graphics card doesn't understand vertices and connectivity. That's it. They have no idea what's going on in terms of curve or shapes. Yeah. So in order to create a mesh, we need two ingredients. One is geometry, which is sort of a mathematical object, let's say. Uh, it, let's say it has like a virtual vertices and then connectivity, that's it. And then material, material is more about like how they look, just like style, yeah. And then the, there's a lot of different types of material, but at least we know, we need to create the mesh. The, in order to create the mesh, there's two different ingredients. One is the object, uh, geometry and material, yeah. With geometry and material, we are able to create the mesh here. And then we need to push this mesh to the thing here. This is what I did. Nothing special. And then I'm just creating uh, the, uh, the loop, looping, like a continuous loop, so that this rectangle is keep like oscillating along the z-axis. Actually, this is y-axis. It's a little bit different kind of system, anyhow. So play with this one. Maybe we can do like this, like a little more faster. Yeah, just like that. Uh, let me jump next example. The primitive. So it has primitive shape. Um, I created this um, sort of um, uh, uh, exercise from this uh, API. So this API. Oops. Sorry. This API, the cone geometry. So we can simply copy, not not recommended, guys. Just typing, yeah. And then um, we have cone here. We have uh, let's say let me decompose a little bit. Okay, this is the geometry and material, and we have a mesh, right? The mesh has. We now we know what, right? So what what's happening behind the scene? That position meaning this is the property of a mesh cone, right? So that we are able to access like the override the value directly. If there's a function like this, right? There's some input value probably, or no input value, maybe. So we, we can understand just by looking at the code on uh, what the developer wants to do, right? So these are some of the very uh, primitive, uh, uh, let's say basic, uh, let's say implementation of a primitive shape in 3JS. And then custom mesh. So this is mesh. I mean, uh, this is a little bit lower level things, but um, even for Lino or any other properties, even you know the, the, the people in in this meeting who are familiar with the Unity, even the Unity is exactly identical approach because Unity used OpenGL. Yeah, this is WebGL, OpenGL. They are essentially the same. So. For the constructing the geometry, the most important thing is that create the vertices, let's say vector, and then make them connect, uh, make connectivity for the vertices. Yeah. So here, I create a geometry. As I said, in order to create a mesh, we need to create a geometry and material. For the geometry, what we know is, oh, geometry needs both several vertices and connectivity, right? So that I push this vertice, vertice, uh, vector to the vertices, right? And then we have a color. Right, and then this is the normal um, vector from for surfaces, anyhow. And then this is the connectivity, basically. Yeah, it's describe describe the uh, face. You know what? What is this? This is actually index of the vertices that we push here. Yeah, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Yeah, this is actually indicating the index. You know what? Uh, C sharp or Python in Rhino, if you create a, your own sort of custom mesh, they have a similar concept. Yeah, there's a vertices and face. You can define like a quad surface or triangle surface. 
let's say the connectivity. So these are the phase three, let's say three triangle shape. There's also the quad shape in Rhino concept. I mean, just as I said, to learn something new, we need to take advantage of our, our like, uh, knowledge that we already have here. I think this is a good approach. And then we have a material, and then now we are able to make the mesh out of geometry material that we already cook above. And then um, I'm making some looping of this geometry. And then while looping, I'm trying to scale, right? Based on this mathematical equation. Yeah, it's nothing special. The scale, yeah. And then uh, I wanna challenge you guys, uh, actually, because this is sort of an easy way of using API. For you guys, probably you guys can make some sort of special like a class to encapsulate and to, to, to you know, make the automatic process yeah, from the injecting uh, JSON file or GeoJSON. And then you automatically, the class is automatically create the vertices and connectivity and then push this mesh to the scene and then we can render it. I mean, this is all about like a, uh, let's say pipeline things. Nothing special, and also I create a example here. Um, I uh, in the uh, the second day of the workshop, I gave you guys like my sort of plugin, right? There's an A1. Uh, I couldn't remember, but there's a component uh, to to save the line of geometry as a JSON file, and then the J we can push this JSON to this environment to reconstruct the the line of things. This I actually I draw this on the line, and then it's simply like a convert Rhino object to the JSON and then reconstruct uh, the, uh, the Rhino shapes in the 3JS out of the, 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 the JSON file here. So it has you know, vertices, set of vertices, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, crazy, crazy. <laughs> yeah, all the way down. We have, uh, just forget about this um, color thing. We have face, right? 804 means we need to make connectivity. We want to make a connect connection uh, among the index A, 0, 4 over vertices. Yeah, this is pretty much about it. Nothing special. And then uh, this is the you know, just boilerplate to install uh, like a scene renderer div, yeah, controller here. And then also we can append some lighting, yeah, because it has a shade, a shader, like, uh, like a, some specular or shade on the screen, anyhow. And then I create the geometry, right? Loop through all the JSON file and then push these vertices to, the, to, to this geometry. Yeah, I'm just repeat, same fashion. And then we have a face and then I'm simply looping the face and then I just assign some connectivity to that geometry and then color. So to think about the geometry has just number as a vertice or face or color, which is some of like a mathematical object. It has nothing to do with other particular API or whatever, right? Um, I just create the, like a Rembrandt material as a sort of default here. And then eventually I am able to create a mesh out of this geometry and material and then push it and then we can basically, you know, convert, migrate the geometry from Rhino environment to 3JS. Yeah, this is the example. And what else we have? Um, yeah, so previously in the, um, the, the we saw, um, yeah, uh, we create the, the mesh land, like a land out of the image in the grasshopper environment. When I talk, talk about the image component, right? So we can implement exactly identical algorithm in that 3JS. But for the visualization, right? I mean, the mesh itself is set of data, right? For the visualization purpose, we need to understand 3JS. I'm just follow the fashion to you know, create a mesh with the geometry and material. So here, uh, let's, say, let's say change it to the other example. Zero, so compute, come on, you are busy. Okay, great. So uh, we have a height map here. Then we can reflect height map. Yeah. Then nothing special. Just one, one thing 
looks at new, the image. What it does is basically parse the image from the internet and then give us a, um, let's say, image class here. So image class, yeah, let's say object, has a width and height, right? Yeah, we can, we can x-ray the image, right? Because we, know, we, we, we did learn, um, you know, the how to create an object class. So we can predict. And then based on the width and height, I'm trying to inspect the color value of individual pixel here. So let me, let me zoom in a lot. Just think about in the Photoshop, you can zoom in all the way in, right? So one pixel is like, you can zoom in like that much big, right? Just like that. So each iteration, we want to visit individual pixel using double for loop here. Where are you? Uh, yeah, here. And then this is the special function. I mean, as I said, just go to uh, the API documentation. There's a lot of like pre-built, inbuilt, useful functions there. Um, so get image data. We can just simply give it X and Y. Yeah, because image is basically 2D, right? And then we can access and then pass the, the result, the value, and then reflect for the mesh in terms of the Z axis. So that we can make some like, you know, uh, the, the elevation of the land, just like this, yeah. And then nothing special, yeah. We have limited time, so I can jump here. So, previously we talked about like a 2D right now, right? Like a two, how to capture 2D uh, space, right? So we basically, we have a 2D and then we discretize like a, tussled to this space in a computable way, the computable like a uh, uh, area so that we can build the individual uh, uh, pixels. But now we can expand the 2D pixel along the Z axis. We have a three dimensional pixel, voxel, yeah? Like a box, we call it voxel actually, yeah? So what I did is uh, I actually import the, the Bani object, which is famous for the 3D graphics. And then, I mean, individually reach if there's a vertices, and then I want to create a box cell there. If there's not, I'm just going to skip it. So at the end of the day, we are able to get this like voxelized uh, bunny here. So here, we have a bunny. Do you want to see bunny? <laughs> okay, I want to see bunny here. Yeah, this is a bunny, actually. Set of vertices, right? And then all the way down here, several, several faces. Yeah. This is the, uh, what the OBJ file. This has a vertices and then connectivity. I'm just literally revisit, indi individual visit, and then construct geometry um, here. Yeah. Here, and then I create the, some small bo bo bounding, bo uh, bounding box using the triple loop, yeah. Yeah, that's it. I encourage you guys to decompose my, my code and then play with. And this is the other example. Um, we, as I said, the OBJ and STL is sort of a text file. It's not a binary file. So we can take advantage of this file. You know, STL is famous for the 3D printings. So meaning that it has a, like a, a set of the you know face and normal and vertices. So for for those who are interested in what is the OBJ file, you can visit here. And then this is some of the syntax that we need to follow, like face, yeah, vertices. This is just a simple rule how they construct, you know. And then we have the STL file here, same as the but different fashion, right? So it makes sense we just follow it, yeah? Just normal, loop, vertices, uh, loop start and loop end. It just explicitly mentioned um, the vertices, meaning the position and the connectivity, meaning surface, well, mesh, yeah. So, and also I give, give you guys an example. This is actually Bunny, you know? So using the OBJ loader, the 3 js give us a special like a wrapper, let's say class, and they take care a lot of 
golden job in terms of network communication and promising and async problem, things like that. So after load function here, we can simply put this uh, line of code and then we can just directly dump this object to the same. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of example for API in the internet, so I'm, I'm just implemented, yeah, nothing special. So for the additional material, we have here a frame. You know what? My first impression of iframe is a uh, what is this? Do you know why? Because it's really, really easy and straightforward. Yeah, so it even it doesn't need like any other um, JavaScript or TypeScript things. Yeah, obviously they, they, they could support, but you know, this is all about, all about it. We have a, a scene here, right? Open and close, and then we have a sky and Plane means green plane, and a cylinder, and a sphere. That's it. it. Not only that, but also it supports like a VR environment. I don't know. It's very easy and straightforward, right? So, I mean, this kind of very high level library is there. So, you guys can um, push your boundary, you know, try to learn new thing. Yeah. So, A frame star is there. Um, and also, as a software engineer of Asri, I did several optimizations. So this is one of my articles. Um, this is a very technical article, um, how we optimize the rendering loop. So for those who are interested in uh, the rendering, how we optimize the performance and pipelines, um, I just uh, um, leave some of my opinion here. So for example, like a picking shape, which is also very computational expense. While looking, we need to compute the picking. So for example, like um, we use the quartry or off-screen rendering technique. I mean, there's a lot of uh, computational jargon there. So anyhow, and also while looking, we also we have the event loop, as I said. You know, we learn something by mouse move and click event. Think about it. The loop, rendering loops keep going. At the same time, we, we append additional tasks to the render, yeah? Obviously, the computational expense become larger, right? So. I mean, there's a several technique that I just, um, um, you know, wanted to share with you guys. So, um, particularly this technique applied for the story map that I developed, particularly for the graphics, which is one of the product in the Ashley. Anyhow, um, yeah, uh, any other question? Uh, NJ, I have two quick questions. Yes, please. Yeah, one for the first example that you show of uh, bringing Rhino geometry to, to 3JS, you said that you exported the JSON from Rhino, right? I've never done that, but do you, is it just a default command or do you need to use a Grasshopper script? I, okay, let me open the, my Grasshopper. Um, I couldn't remember clearly right now because I did like several years ago. Um, let me drill down a little bit. So um, I gave you, you guys like some line of plugin, right? Uh, today, and second workshop, right? So in that, actually I trigger what's happening. In that, uh, uh, the library, uh, it has a multiple uh, subset of my plugin. Then you can actually download from food for Rhino. Um, Yeah, NJ asked here, uh, where are you? Um, I think so, yeah, this one, maybe I O this, okay, let me, let me, let me do this. Um, let's say we have um, spear, oops, I want to click the spear, come on, okay, spear, and then geometry, Right, and then I need to, we need to convert to mesh, right? Makes sense. Now we got mesh here, and then no. Okay, yeah, I think this. Yay, we are able to get this giant string here. Let me copy this file, actually. 
copy data only. Huh. I'm just curious whether it works or not. Uh, here. Just in case, I want to check. Wow, there's a lot of vertices. Let me double check. Okay, parentheses. So from here, I think I need to override all the way down. I mean, there, there will be much more smart way, but I'm just doing something quickly. Because, you know, the code pen has its own sort of limitation. Yeah. Okay, there's error. Okay. Uh, actually, you can with a simple box. That's yeah, just a simple box. And then, inject and copy data only, right? So, select here, all the way up. Paste. What's wrong? Okay. Maybe you can go to the JSON validate uh, link here, just in case. Oh, that's why. Really, it's validated. Okay, then can come back here. Actually, what I did is just uh, no, take the safe way. Yeah, just copy and paste. Yeah. So um, yeah, again, there should be a smart way, but I'm just I'm I'm never prepared. I mean, never never expect. You guys ask me, but um, yeah, here the, the, there's a library I, I used. So I I'm just trying to remember. Probably there's a, the other way around uh, to save this data, not just copy that the component here. So yeah, um, if you have any you know idea to develop this plugin further, please let me know, and then I will update when I have time. And then, do, do you guys have any question here? Oh yeah. Got it. Got it. Thanks, NJ. I also saw. I also saw the uh the link that Phil placed on the chat. So thanks very much. So just yeah. a quick question: Is JSON is JSON the best format to convert from Rhino to web? It depends. And, uh, okay. So what are the other options? And if assuming that uh we still want some interactivity when we Port our Rhino models over to the web. Like for example, if you click on it, you want to be able to show some interactivity. Yeah. You can create your path. own. Yeah, you can create your own sort of the special data format. Actually, this data format is uh, my I, my creation. Yeah, it. I just follow the format of JSON, but the you know there's a meta tag and then version and type. This is just I just designed that kind of a pattern. So. Got it. Even if, even and sorry, if just a quick one. Are the are the points the vertices? Because because the numbers below seem to be if if it's the vertices, it seems too many numbers for the vertices. So what are the points? Uh, is the diction the JSON dictionary part after the V? Yeah, uh, in the, your data uh, format. Yeah. So actually, you know, what? if you bake this mesh. Uh, okay. Yeah, it has a. A lot of vertices. Can you see that? That's why we have this many. Oh, buttons. okay. Got yeah. it. Got it. So it's yeah. a mesh format. Yeah. It's a little bit. I mean, uh, there's more beyond the visual things actually. So actually, you can optimize the, the the vertices in the mesh. But what the component does is just literally convert. So that's why we have additional vertices, which is unnecessary. Correct. Yeah. Got it. Uh, thanks. Yeah. Any other question? Yeah. Um, I have a question. Yes, please. So, 
So for the, the app, do you have, or for the, the widget in Grasshopper, do you have that on GitHub so that we could fork it and then we can request changes and then you can update it that way? Uh, I've never thought about it. Um, this is uh, something um, private for now. Yeah. But oh, would, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a different way of thinking, make a library to the public. Because sometimes if you, the library put the public and then every people try to, you know, tweak them and update it. So it, it could become easy to, you know, um, I don't know. I mean, it's hard to maintain basically. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, with a one authorship, the, the guy can like uh, take care of all of responsibility to, to you know dealing with the problems. So what, I don't know. But later, yeah, I'm 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 the guy who wanted to share more knowledge or experience to other people. Mm -hmm. So yeah, later I will. Yeah, if there is a chance, I'm definitely think about it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, by the way, also I have a C sharp. Uh, um, YouTube things, but most of them is Korean. But whenever I have time, I'm trying to my, uh, the translate. Uh, let's say create an uh, English version with the C sharp um, tutorial. I will I will talk about it later at the end of this workshop. So you guys can visit my uh, YouTube. That is some C sharp, let's say English version of tutorials. So um, I'm basically talk about like a fundamental like a, the um, I mean it's, it's not about using the the, the Rhino common API. As long as you understand the fundamental knowledge like a quality system vector and connectivity, and then you can just implement it without the helping, uh, the help from the Rhino API, which is actually good, good hobby because you're gonna be free from any other platform. Whenever you need, you can create. This is just, you know, as I said, only limitation of our imagination or experience because we have on the full tool set in our you know, experience or mind. So, Okay, great. Um, as I mentioned, I'm sorry, as I mentioned, um, I wanna finalize all the workshop today. So bear with me. 